So, you're thinking about moving to Bend and you wanna learn about the downtown area? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be covering in today's video. We are at historic Drake Park. It's our version of Central Park. And oh, we're gonna I think be, you're overselling it a little bit. Maybe this, a little bit. This is like 13 acres. This is not, but it's amazing, but this it is, is not that size, this come on. 13 acre park, it's our version of Central Park and it's 850 prestigious acres. But we're gonna be checking out the downtown area, the park, the subdivisions behind us, that's River West behind us. And then we have the old Bend neighborhood right in front of us. Downtown, like I said, is to my left. The old mill district is just a few blocks away straight ahead. So if this video sounds like it's for you, stick around, we're gonna be getting after this tour right now. So Central Park is 850 acres. Drake Park is about 13 acres. Yes, let's make sure that we differentiate the two. Now let's get into it. If this is your first time on the channel and you'd like to know everything there is to know about living, eating, sleeping, playing, the good and the bad of Central Oregon, subscribe to the channel and tap the bell for notifications. My name is Zach Nutter, licensed broker with eXp Realty in the state of Oregon. This is Ryan, my business partner, also licensed in the state of Oregon with eXp Realty. We get calls, texts, and emails every day from people just like you looking to make the smooth move here to Central Oregon, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to move in nine days, 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We'd love to help you make a smooth move here to Central Oregon. So let's go take a look at Drake Park, this amazing 13 acre property right here in the heart of Bend, Oregon. Let's get after it right now. Okay, so we are at the very north end of the park now. This little boardwalk that we're gonna be walking on here over the next couple minutes just opened up about two weeks ago. This is Newport Avenue right behind us and we're gonna walk all the way down to the edge of the park talking about the history of the park, what's in and around the area here, giving you guys a feel for what this centrally located park is all about because it really is bend in a nutshell. So let's just start walking right now. We have this really cool vantage point that we otherwise haven't had forever. This, this portion of the park was never accessible until this boardwalk came in and was installed yep. over the last couple weeks. Before we get too far too, right behind us is Pioneer Park. It's actually where my parents got married, but this is the first time that these two parks are actually this close of proximity that you can actually get to one or the other very easily. So um, this is brand new to all of us. So super cool. You guys are kind of getting a first glimpse at this. So we'll just kind of walk you through. We're gonna, like Brian said, we're gonna talk about the history of the park and all that good stuff. So we'll just cruise along. So how big it's, uh, Drake Park's like 13 acres, right? 13 acres, like we were debating over yeah. in the introduction. Not Central Park size. Yeah, but certainly It's not. kind of this amazing little oasis in the middle of Bend that um, is just so refreshing. You can come out here and throw a blanket down, have a picnic. In the summertime, there is amazing concerts. So Thursday nights, I think it's like 12 weeks long during the summer, maybe a little less, but yeah. we have Munch and Munch Music, and music for sure. where they've got a band. We'll show you where they set little up. Amphitheater a little amphitheater down here. We'll check that out. Um, and there's thousands of people down here, food vendors, people selling all kinds of crafts and different stuff. It's just an amazing little hub. I would say the only thing really like it but quite a bit different where you can experience this kind of nature in bend would be the river trail mm -hmm. which obviously is all part of the deschutes river here so this is the big deschutes river um, but the river trail is a three mile loop down near the old mill district which is close proximity to here you can get there just walking through a couple of the neighborhoods but you're able to get out of your car and literally cruise right into a park you can be downtown or in the park or right on the river with the rapids. You can be floating just within minutes of pretty much anywhere in town. It's such a unique thing to have accessible to you at your fingertips pretty much anywhere you live here in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, unique. So to my right is, uh, that's Mirror Pond. So that's the, the Deschutes River, but it's dammed up a little ways downstream. And so it has its name because it's so still and simply you could potentially see your reflection in the water, right? But that's Mirror Pond, that's where Deschutes Brewery's acclaimed uh, pale ale, Mirror Pond pale ale, gets its inspiration from right here. This is the, the body of water right here. You can see some homes across the river there. That is uh, the, the River Bend neighborhood, historic home sites over there. Those 
uh, are very prestigious. They typically get passed down from generation to generation because where else and how often are you gonna be able to get access to more riverfront footage for building a home? So those are historic homes. Those are probably 80 to 100 years old over here. We'll just kind of pan over there and take a look at that. Uh, very unique in that regard. And it's, uh, it's special to be able to have that type of access to the river just from your backyard. If we look up above this little cliff here, again, this is new, this little boardwalk, but right up here is just downtown. Downtown's right up there. That's where a lot of the shops, the restaurants, and the historic downtown, it's very uh, bustling now. It's a very, uh, very popular area to hang out. There's just tons of people that are always in the downtown area and they come down to the Drake Park area and they can eventually get to the west side of town because Drake Park kind of is that connecting piece between downtown and the west side of Bend. So, so many activities down here. So you've got um, Saturday Market that happens just right up there in downtown. You've, we talked about Munch and Music. They have the duck race here. So they take, you can buy a ticket. I think it's $20 for a duck. They take a dump truck of ducks up river, drop them in the river, and then they put numbers on the bottom of all the ducks. And whatever duck crosses that line first, used to be you'd win a car which my barber my old barber actually won a car um now it's like a voucher to buy a car it's a certain monetary value but there's just so much that happens here in downtown in drake park this is definitely the kind of the heart and soul of bend um and there's just so much that's always going on here if you want to just have a relaxing afternoon you come out here kick your shoes off throw a blanket down have a picnic listen to some music there's always people down here, whether they're LARPing or playing ultimate Frisbee, or mm. there's just so many things. What you would expect to see in a community park, realistically though, it's more like a community park that you'd see on TV that you're like, nah, people don't do that. That's what's going on here yeah. at all times. Um, there's always something interesting, fun, entertaining, relaxing going on here in Drake Park. So what we're gonna do now is just kind of walk through the park and we'll show you guys what it's all about, the neighborhoods that are around it, give you a feel for what that looks like, and then talk about some of the other keystone areas that are within Drake Park. So let's just start walking right now and check it all out. So behind us, we have a high wheel log skitter. So these were used uh, back in the day when there wasn't this big, crazy equipment that we have now. Um, so this is kind of an homage to that, but it was, it's pretty rough terrain around here in some of the areas where all the logging was done. So Bend was a logging town. So this equipment behind us is an homage to our history here in Bend and some of the equipment that was used um, for logging here in Bend. It's actually really interesting. So growing up here, we kind of, by the time we were born and raised, the logging industry had really kind of fallen out of, I wouldn't say out of favor. It, it just wasn't really existing anymore. There were still a few of the mills standing, but they were pretty much all vacant. Um, and we had transitioned into more of a tourism driven town at that point. Mm -hmm. But you could see a lot of the remnants of the logging town, you know, where the old mill is now was old abandoned um, factories for sawmills and different stuff like that. And now they're big REI stores and movie theaters and attractions. But this is a really interesting piece of our history here in Bend. It's a, it's a funny point that Zach brings up too, because we both, we are, when we say we're 30 year residents, we actually are. 
Uh, I moved here in 1991. The population sign said 22, 23,000 people. There wasn't a parkway that goes right through Bend anymore. But when that parkway was installed, I think in the mid 90s, um, there's bridges that go up over around the, the surrounding land and everything. But you could look to your left if you were driving northbound and you could see those mills and there were logs, stacks of logs with sprinklers on them. There was still a yep. functioning mill there. And so it's really not that far uh, back in our history Pretty in which in history, Bend yeah. really was a mill town but since then now these are the historical markers right behind us this neighborhood that we're looking at behind now this is the old Bend neighborhood that's that's actually what it's titled because this is basically where Bend started and these are the original homes that the loggers the, the ranchers the people that lived here early on uh, they lived right here. This was Bend. And so if we look behind us, which we will get to eventually, that's going to the west towards Bachelors. Zach was touching on the point that we are less of a logger style town, not even a logger style town. We're more of a tour style town, but we're also transitioning into more of like a industry st style town where a lot of people that move here now in the recent past, the last 10 or 15 years, they bring their business concepts here. So we're not just tourism focused now because Bachelor opened up, opened up back in 1965. Always been tourism. Yep. And so it, that was like the centerpiece of Ben for the longest time. And the biggest drag about living here was, I love being here, but how do I make a living here? Now there's other opportunities. And that's what's really unique about Ben is that it's growing up into a bigger city. Some people don't like that, but that's just the way it is. If there's things that are out of your control, you just kind of deal with it and roll with it. But Ben is growing up and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of industry like we talked about. And so Ben is not just a tourist town anymore, but it's also a town that has all kinds of exciting innovation going on pretty interesting just like what you see behind us there's still a lot of like little rules and tidbits you find about Ben that actually tie back to our logging days so uh, a super interesting little tidbit is at Ben Golf Club so Ben Golf Club was formed by people that worked in the mill for the mill workers and so we are probably one of the only private country clubs that actually allows blue jeans to be worn on the course and it was because the guys that were working they'd come back from work yeah it was a little nine hole course built in 1925 it's now an 18 hole course it's amazing but you can still go out there and play blue jeans i can't play golf in blue jeans i can't play <laughs> golf normally very well anyway but uh but you just get a lot of little things about our history that are still around today and it's a pretty amazing um, deep history that we have here yeah, absolutely. So let's keep walking the park now. We'll show you the amphitheater where Munch and Music is. We'll show you where all the rafters, you've probably heard stories about uh, floating the river in Bend. Well, we'll show you exactly where all those floaters typically will end their float right at the edge of the park here, just a few feet away. We're gonna keep walking and we'll just show you guys the rest of this area, some of the houses along the way to give you a feel for what the centerpiece park is in Bend and what it's all about. It's pretty hot out. I may have to take a dip in the drink while we're over there. <laughs> That would be a good idea. All right, so right behind us, you'll see the Drake Park Amphitheater. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but it, it's what it is. So imagine two, 3,000 people in the park, you've got a live band going here, you've got food vendors, bounce houses, you've got little artisan tent set up. It's a really neat event every summer. When we were kids, we'd come down here, hang out with our friends, have an absolute blast. It's kind of a, a staple of summer here in Bend, Oregon, but this, you can see right behind us, you've got the river, you've got the amphitheater on the other side, you've got all the historic houses that are on Mir Pond. This is a really cool place to be in the summertime and such amazing memories. So if you get a chance to 
come here for a munch and music in the summer, this is an absolutely fantastic little stop here. This really is a big draw. Uh, this, this part of town here is what really gets people excited about Bend in general. We actually were just filming here a couple minutes ago. We ran into some people from the East Coast and they were asking us what we were doing. We're filming for our real estate channel and they were potentially in the market for a home too at some point. But people that visit here, they come downtown, they fall in love with this area, the Drake Park area, the downtown area, the gateway to the West Side area. It's close proximity to everything. And so you can reach point A to point B to point C in relatively short order and it doesn't take a car to do it. And that's one of the unique things about this area and that's what one of the biggest draws is is when people do come to visit here for the first time Drake Park has got to be on that list among other things uh, about Ben but right here the centerpiece of Ben this is Drake Park you see the homes behind us Zach was touching on that we've got homes in front of us the old mill district is is very nearby uh, the box factory is very nearby our Hayden Homes amphitheater is in the old mill district so there is just you got Galveston All right down the road. All kinds of things. Yep. The Galveston Corridor is there. Uh, great proximity to a lot of shoppes and restaurants we as well. Shoot a video on Galveston's Corridor. That's probably That's a good a idea. Let's, let's do that here in a couple minutes. Cool. We'll keep, uh, keep on checking this area out here. So and one of the... We'll, uh, go one of the you, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry to cut you off, Ryan. Right. One of the unique things about Ben, so there's... We are the sixth... I believe we're the sixth largest ski uh, resort in, in North, North America. America. Yep. So what makes us different is the water. So one, we have great drinking water, but that's not what we're talking about here. So we've got lakes and rivers surrounding us. So a lot of these amazing ski resort areas don't have the amazing lakes that are 15, 20, 30 minutes away that we have here. We've got a river that runs right through our town that is custom made for floating All kinds of stuff yeah you can surf so here activities. if you like to surf we've got a surf wave surfing uh, in bend can you, you know, do that they uh it used to be a spillway and so many people were when we grew up nobody floated the river here it just wasn't a thing we would jump off one of the bridges and hang out by the bridge and and swim in the river kind of more over by the old mill but now everybody floats the river and there was a spillway and it's right on call right underneath colorado and people would get sucked down the spillway it was terrible so they're like we got to do something about this we got to make our floating experience better here in Ben so they built this massive facility that's got this little uh, easy spot that you can raft down but they also put right in the middle of it this section that has a wave so you'll see a line of 10 people that wait on this little peninsula and they'll get on and they surf this wave you surf it till you fall down then you go get the back of the line wait your turn to do it again so our water here is spectacular it's an amazing addition to what Bend has to offer. We've got these homes right behind us here. Again, Mirror Pond. It's the uh, the portion of the Deschutes River that goes right through the center of Bend. But Bend has been uh, developing for a long time, right? And so now it's developing further and further upstream. This is kind of the original area that was developed around the Deschutes River, and we can go upstream. That's what Zach is talking about right near the spillway where the surf park is. I mean, there's a surf park in Central Oregon. Who would have thought? So you see people driving around town with surfboards on top of their cars, whether it's a stand-up paddleboard or a traditional surfboard. It's, it's pretty remarkable to be able to have access to so many different options. And this is just inside the city limits too. So yes, pretty, pretty cool to say the very least. Behind me here is a footbridge. It's the gateway to the west side neighborhoods. There's a school over there. There's a bunch of shops and restaurants. And so in front of us is where downtown is. We've walked a little way since then, but we just wanna show you the connectivity and just how close things are in proximity to one another. So we'll keep on going down the park here. We're almost to the end of the park, which will also mean the end of this video, but we wanna show you guys what it's really all about. You see these homes behind me? Those are pretty spectacular. We've talked about those before but uh, it just gets better the further we go. We're gonna keep going. And before we go too far, Ryan and I kind of have a dispute about east side, west side. This is kind of a long standing argument between <laughs> yeah. people that have lived here and been for a long time. unwritten rules about yeah. being a Bendite for 30 so years. So a lot of people believe that the, that the Deschutes River is the, the line separating east side from west side of town, which is total that, hogwash. That's where I stand. Now, 
That's because Ryan, Ryan hasn't lived here as long as I have. But well, so that's close, debatable. Pal. Close, but no, no, <laughs> facts are facts. What year? But, uh, what year? Uh, 1987, I believe. Are you making that up? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember. I think I was like <laughs> second grade or something. Yeah. So I think a little bit older than I than thought. <laughs> but so the true, if you look on the maps and if you're looking at buying a house, east side is Highway 97 East. West side is Highway 97 West. But many people believe and hold true to the fact that the west side of the river, that's the west side of town. So you will get some people talking about it differently. Ryan's wrong about this, but <laughs> uh, west side, east side is the highway, but some people think it's the river. So let's Ag keep going. Agree to disagree. <laughs> let's keep walking. Okay, we made it to the end of the park here. The little beach area that we're at right here, this is where all the rafters actually pull out of the river after they start up in the old mill district. So if we pan over here, we might be able to see some of them. They're coming in from underneath the Galveston Street Bridge. Okay, so Galveston Street or Galveston Avenue is right over here. We started at Newport. So the park actually connects basically from Newport Avenue to Galveston Avenue, to the primary streets on the west side of town going east to west. Right in front of us, you can't really see right now, but there, is, there is a bus, a little bus that'll come pick you up. Bus and back so there. You can go right in over by the Park and Rec Center Shuttle over service. in the Old Mill. Come float down, bring your tube, put your tube in the bus, get in the bus, and it'll take you right back to where you started. You wanna do Amazing loops, service. you can loop it. Yep. all day yep it's about an hour float um and you don't have to get out you used to have to get out but now you can cruise right through Service. here in about an hour you can go downtown if you want to have a bite a drink whatever you want but it's pretty amazing to have right here in the heart of band kind of the it's a great place to be the last part of our conversation here about drake park because it's kind of the end of the float and everything else it's a, it's a really cool little spot here so this will wrap up the video today. This is Drake Park, the historic neighborhoods that are around Drake Park. Behind us is gonna be the gateway to the entire west side of Bend, if you're going by my terms of what the west side of Bend is. <laughs> west but, side's quite a, or the east side's quite a ways over there on the other side of the highway, but. Aubrey so. Butte's up there, guys. I mean, this is pretty cool stuff right here. So we're thankful that you're still watching this. If you're here, do us a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment in the comment section below. And as always, if it's your time to reach out to us, it starts with you. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, set up that Zoom meeting. We wanna be the service providers for you as it relates to your real estate needs. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you on the next video. Thank you guys, we'll see you soon.